Good morning and welcome to another Facebook Live Tuesday tour brought to you by your Purdue Alumni Association. This is John Sauter along with April Holider behind the camera and her production crew. And uh, this morning it finds us um, actually one day after classes have started. It's a little overcast here. Rained all day yesterday. The freshmen found out mom was right. They need an umbrella. Uh, but we're back in session and it's always exciting to have the, uh, the students back on campus. Uh, today we're on the north side of campus, uh, up by the football field. With the uh, kickoff of about 10 days away, we thought this would be a great chance to talk about the football program and really highlight their brand new football facility that we have with us today. And so that's what we're going to talk about, the Purdue Football Performance Complex and the practice fields and the things that are with it. That's where we're headed today during our visit with you. So let me go back a little bit and really kind of set the scene for this beautiful facility that we have. In 2015, just three years ago, uh, there was something called a, a football summit. And this was out on the west coast, I think San Diego, and it involved high-level Purdue University administrators. So Mitch Daniels and Mike Berghoff and Tom Spurgeon from the trustees, along with uh, some notable Purdue football alumni, including Drew Brees and others, uh, got together for a few days and just started, uh, and Morgan Burke was there, and just reviewing uh, the football program. And uh, out of that really came um, uh, 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 a significant conclusion, and that was, and it's no surprise, that facilities are part of the compensation, part of the currency these days of, of the in the college football realm. So facilities really do make a difference. Now that's not really a surprise because we had the Mullenkopf enclosed practice facility added as all teams were adding enclosed practice facilities, you had to keep up. Well, we needed to get ahead of the game just a little bit. And back in 2015, again, President Daniels, Morgan Burke, Mike Berghoff, big decision makers, along with some donors, including Drew, decided it was time for Purdue to really up the ante a little bit. So Drew, uh, put forward the uh, the lead gift uh, ended up being a 65 million dollar complex, 112,000 square feet. But just uh, a couple years later, September of 2017, a year ago, less than a year ago, we dedicated this beautiful facility, and obviously it has attracted football coaching personnel, it has uh, attracted Purdue recruiting personnel, highly regarded as really the state of the art when it comes to college football and what you can be doing for its athletes and what it, it takes to attract talent. And so it's all right here and again we hope you're going to have a chance to visit it soon. So today we're not going to really go in depth. It's three floors. Um, the lower floors include weight training and um, sports medicine facilities and locker rooms. Uh, the middle floor includes a lot of uh, uh, the a theater where the entire football team can sit for a while and uh, view videos and that sort of thing, position rooms, uh, they have a nice uh, lobby that, that we are going to go into and then the top floor is all uh, coaching offices or so. We're just going to go into the, uh, the lobby area. The main part is really uh, pretty well closed off unless you get a special tour these days with all the practice and all the plays being drawn up on boards and things like that. They're a little sensitive about information, which we understand. So we're going to show you what we can. So first we're going to walk in and talk a little bit about practice fields, kind of the basics. But this, these two fields, along with the enclosed Mullenkopf practice field, are the three fields that are available. So obviously in Mullenkopf, which is connected, it's, it's, uh, it's for the entire year, so they can practice year-round in that facility. These are the two outdoor facilities. One is natural turf, and this is the natural turf field, and the other one is the synthetic turf, artificial turf. So depending on the team that will be playing this coming weekend, that's the, that's the texture of the field they want to play on. Uh, this is where they practice every afternoon, you know, from 3 to 6. Most, are, most practices are open, but not all of them. Um, I can tell you though, but it's really gotten very specific um, in terms of if we're going to play an opponent that has an extremely loud crowd, let's take Notre Dame for example, they'll actually bring in speakers and put them all around the field to create crowd noise. So the players have to get used to hand signals 
and really being able to communicate in that kind of an environment, uh, leaving nothing to chance. And uh, you can see some different viewing stands. They actually video every practice, so they're really observing the player techniques, basic techniques of tackling and blocking and knowing plays and all that sort of thing. Uh, getting very, very sophisticated these days uh, in, in the college football realm. But we're so blessed to have these excellent facilities. Now for some of you, um, you may recall this is the area where we had the Grand Prix track. Uh, it was in its heyday from the 60s, 70s, and 80s, and even the 90s. Uh, but it moved out as created this. There's a little bit of parking on the other side, but this is where the Grand Prix track used to be as football became that priority. Um, now we're going to walk into the facility. You might wonder, as I've wondered, you see the 1228 up in the corner. Uh, that's actually our address on Wooden Drive here. So if you're going to send a coach some fan mail, 1228 Wooden Drive is the actual address. Apparently it's one of the design features they want to include. But the beautiful Motion P, kind of a beacon, calling all the Boilermakers back to the football season, back to the football field. We're now going to work our way up into the public area, into the uh, program history area. This is open every day uh, and it'll be open on the mornings of uh, football games also. So April if you want to scoot in here we'll get inside the, the historical area. Oh look at that video board. Okay. This is a very very well done uh, collection of uh, Purdue history as a matter of fact. Uh, very attractive facility. Again, you're going to have to come to the games a little bit early to make sure you get, in, get into this facility. But let's go back through memory lane just a little bit. We have all the different trophies, all the unique trophies, championship trophies that we've won from the different bowl games. And if we go back and start with this one early on, this is the Peach Bowl trophy from 1978. And, uh, you know, to me that doesn't seem that far ago, that far uh, ago, long ago. Uh, 1978, I can remember being at the Peach Bowl, and so uh, a very unique trophy. And then coming forward in 79, we were at the Blue Bonnet Bowl, we were the champions of the Blue Bonnet Bowl. In 1980, we won the Liberty Bowl. The, this was really the heyday, and uh, we were cruising back in those three years. But as we know, things change, and it uh, doesn't always continue to go that way. So now we're going to go across the way as we pick up some more trophies from the bowl games and we go to the Alamo Bowl again very memorable bowl this is 1997 uh, we were the champions in that particular bowl in San Antonio beautiful location for some bowl games very convenient from where you lived and the river walk and just it was a short walk to the pep rallies and then a short walk to the football stadium and again in 98, again, we're cruising in bowls again. It's, uh, it was just a fun time. This is the, uh, this would be the Outback Trophy, the Outback Bowl Trophy in, in 2000. Uh, one of the more unique looking trophies. Followed by the Sun Bowl, the Wells Fargo Sun Bowl, 2002. It's one of several Sun Bowls we went to in El Paso. And followed by the Champs Bowl uh, in 2006. So a great collection of trophies. There's one more I'll highlight, but on our way over there, I'm going to point out some individual game trophies that we have. We have the Cannon, which is the award given to the winner of the Purdue-Illinois game. We have the Shillelagh, which isn't here right now, but it's given to the winner of the Notre Dame-Purdue um, football game. It's a great traditions here. <clears throat> But probably the granddaddy tradition of them all would be the Old Oak and Bucket. And many of you are familiar with the Old Oak and Bucket. Um, actually started in uh, 1925, started awarding this, uh, the Old Oak and Bucket. Um, and if you're uh, astute, you've probably noticed this is the carrying case for the Old Oak and Bucket. They actually keep the actual uh, Oak and Bucket up in the coaches' uh, suite areas up, upstairs. Uh, for additional motivation for the players brought out at the right time. So it's a carrying case. But we like the oak and bucket uh, because we can proudly say that there are 73 P's and only 41 I's on there as well as six ties. So uh, we, uh, we go after that. We got it last year and we plan to keep that for, uh, for a good while. <clears throat> 
here it spells out a lot of our traditions. And if, uh, if you want to get the story straight as to what is the Boilermaker, here's the actual article out of the newspaper. It talks about the Boilermaker special, the extra special, Purdue Pete, marching band, why we're old, gold, and black, all those sorts of things. Uh, just a great coverage of that. Then we're going to scoot across over here and have a look at our most recent trophy that we're most proud of. That's the Master Farms Bowl. This is the one that we won in 2017. And uh, this really kind of got us back into got us back into action, and really was a capstone for this facility, and uh, and all the po all the possibilities coming out of it. Very attractive trophy. So, got the video board working for us. Most of it. Hey guys. Excuse us. We're going to now go into more uh, uh, history of the Purdue program. And we're going to talk about what they call the den of defensive ends. So these are defensive ends, significant defensive ends over the years. Back, say, back in the way 1949, uh, Leo Sugar all the way up to Ryan Bergen, all the defensive ends that have really kind of made a difference for Purdue. I always like to point out Chike O'Keefer from West Lafayette High School. My wife taught English to Chike O'Keefer. So we all have a little connection here. Uh, just a great guy to, great guy to be around. Uh, here on display is the Big Ten Champions Trophy. This is from the year 2000. Uh, Joe Tiller got us a championship in the year 2000. That's worth seeing. And then, of course, many of you are familiar with the cradle of quarterbacks. And here is a great listing of all of our quarterbacks, all the way back with Bob DeMoss and Dale Samuels, Lenny Dawson, Bob Greasy, Mike Phipps, Gary Danielson, Mark Herman, Scott Campbell, Jim Everett, Drew Brees, Kyle Art, Curtis Painter, and who knows going to be next uh, on that. Great to follow their careers. Uh, a, a, a great tradition to have at Purdue in, in terms of turning quarterbacks and all the things that have come out of this. Many of you may remember that Lanny Dawson was the golden boy, which is why we ended up having the golden girl at Purdue, because Al Wright thought we needed a golden girl also. We still have a golden girl, as a matter of fact. Um, all these are activated. Some of the screens you see uh, don't really have images on them right now. They had a, uh, a power outage overnight and still kind of recovering from that, but the big board is going, and so we're glad to see that. Here we have a variety of uh, individual trophies uh, given to a lot of our players. Uh, the Maxwell Award, which is given to the nation's outstanding player in the year 2000, that went to Drew Brees. Uh, John McKay Award, nation's best tight end, Tim Stratton, 2000. Woody Hayes Award, National Scholastic Athlete Award, John Staniford in 2004. Sammy Ball Award, Bob Gre which is given to the outstanding passer. Bob Greasy, Mike Phipps, Kerman, interestingly, Drew Brees didn't win that one. Ray Guy, outstanding punter, and that's Travis Dorch in 2001, got that award. This really, this board really captures a lot of this distinguished Boilermakers and the coaches in particular. Here are all the different football coaches. Uh, it's probably worthwhile pointing out we've had 36 football coaches in our career, in our uh, history at Purdue. Uh, 36 coaches compared to 12 presidents of the university. Pick out which has the most, is the most hazardous career opportunity for you. Um, but a great listing of coaches, a lot of history along the way. Um, this uh, particular poster points out all Americans at Purdue. Uh, Ryan Kerrigan be the last, last one in 2010. Uh, some of you can go back. Here's Bernie Flowers. I know Adela Flowers is one of our biggest fans out there, so I want to make sure I point out her husband, Bernie. Uh, academic All-Americans are listed also. Um, so just a lot of great program history in this particular facility, um, as well as the facility itself. Uh, connected to Molenkoff. Uh, I'm sure there'll be an opportunity for many of you if you want to come back and take a tour of the facility, you can. Uh, two more trophies over here. Um, that is the Motor City Bowl and the Little Caesars Pizza Bowl are mentioned here also. But I want to end here with a perfect backdrop of the football stadium, sort of the new lights that have been added to the stadium. And again, in 10 days, Thursday night, August 30th at 7 o'clock, Northwestern's going to be here. The crowd's going to be filling the stadium, and we're going to start another wonderful Purdue football season. 
So we hope you'll come back for that. We hope you'll certainly come in and visit this very attractive facility. We hope this kind of wets your whistle a little bit about the whole program um, with this particular issue of uh, Facebook Live. Um, two weeks from today, we're going to be uh, over at Cary Quad Wrangle. We're going to look at Cary Quad and actually see a student room, what they look like these days. So on behalf of April and John Sauter, keep, thanks for watching and uh, hail Purdue.